So the first step in getting our application up and running, we need to download it and install it onto our computer. So we're going to come to this URL, keypass.info forward slash download dot HTML. And you're going to see two different versions here. You'll see a version one, you'll see a version two, uh, and you see two different options for each of those versions, downloading an exe file or downloading a zip file. So what you're going to want to do is find the version two and download the exe file. If you really want the zip and you know what that is, go ahead and do that. Uh, if you don't know what that is, that's fine. Go ahead and just select the exe file as what you want to download. So when you click on that, it's going to bring up this screen. It tells you your download will start shortly, so you're just waiting for that countdown and you will see it pop up. Now I'm doing this in Chrome, so if you're using a different browser, it might look a little bit different, but in Chrome it'll pop up here at the bottom. I see that it's downloaded, so I'm going to click on it and I'm going to tell it to run. Now it's going to walk through that installation. Pretty standard installation steps. Select a language. You have the option here to read the license agreement and you'll need to accept that in order to move forward. Uh, here you have different components that you can choose to add or uh, not add. You'll see they're all pretty small so for me I just leave them and install all of them. Uh, if you want either a desktop or a quick launch shortcut you go ahead and check one of the, or both of those boxes. Uh, and then it's going to give you a final summary and give you an install button. So you can review this, make sure you don't want to make any changes. Go ahead and hit the install and let it do its thing. And it'll take just a second there. Once it's done, it's going to give you this screen. You've got the option there to launch KeyPass. Uh, hit the finish button to finish the installation. And this will open our application. Okay, you've got your application installed. Now you're ready to start using it. Uh, just like most applications, what you'll find with KeyPass is there are multiple ways to do any one thing. There's not really a right way or a wrong way. I'm going to show you one way, uh, but you might find a different way to do these same things. Uh, and, and please pick whatever's easiest for you. So with that, we're going to create a new database. And I'm going to do that by clicking this button here and it's going to give me this prompt uh, explaining to me about data files and how those work. A couple of key things here. Remember where the database file is stored and regularly create a backup of that database file. You want to make sure to do those things because if you don't uh, you might lose your passwords. If you can't remember where the file is uh, or if you don't have a backup and something happens you would be unable to retrieve your passwords and that would be pretty painful. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and it's going to ask me to create a database. I can name it whatever I want to here. And once I have that named, I'm going to save that. It's going to ask me for a password. Uh, so for the purposes of the demo, I'm just creating a simple password, 12345, 12345. And you'll see there's an ellipsis here that if I click that, it will show me what I've typed in so that I can make sure that I typed it in the way I want it to. Uh, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now these are all advanced options here and some different settings. You don't really need to mess with these. You can go ahead and leave it the way that it is. Go ahead and hit OK. It's going to ask you to print an emergency sheet. So this is going to be all of these configuration things that we're doing right now. It's going to print out a sheet that shows you that so you can store that uh, and uh, not have to remember everything that we've done today. For the purposes of the demo, I'm going to skip it. So now that I've done that, you'll see we're all ready to go. The database has been set up. It's created some groups for me. Uh, and it's created some sample entries as well. So with this in the system, I can now start adding actual accounts, usernames, and passwords. So now we have our application set up. We've got a database created. Now we're ready to start looking at the groups that we have in the application. So groups are just a way that you can uh, categorize like entries in the software so that you can easily find, say for example, your banking 
uh, accounts or your email accounts or whatever logical groups you have in your head uh, as far as how you think about the different uh, accounts and usernames and passwords that you have you're able to set that up and group entries uh, by those logical groups that are in your head so uh, I've deleted some of the default ones they show up now as you can see here in the recycle bin and I left a couple of the defaults email and home banking and so now what I want to do is I'm going to add a new group by right clicking on the white space and you'll notice I selected my passwords first because I want this new group to to sit or fall within the my passwords folder uh, and so I hit add a group I'm gonna give it a name we're gonna call this websites and we're gonna go ahead and hit enter now so you'll see now I have this new group so I've got three groups email home banking websites uh, and I've got my recycle bin there so now that I've added my new website group uh, I can modify existing groups so for example let's say I don't like home banking as a name so what I did was I right clicked on that to pull up this menu again then I'm gonna select edit group I can give it a new name I'm just gonna call it banking uh, and that allows me to modify that uh, and then email uh, we're going to modify this one as well edit group I'm gonna call this just mail uh, notice here also you have an icon so I can come in here KeePass has a lot of different icons you can change this if you want to I'm not going to change this one uh, it's appropriate for the group uh, and if you want to use those icons to differentiate you can go ahead and do that as well so that allows me to change those groups one last thing I'll show you with groups you have the ability to delete groups and so uh, if I come and I right click again to pull up this menu I can delete a group by selecting delete group you'll also notice throughout KeePass you see hotkeys that are listed on the side so if I hit the delete key by just selecting this and I hit delete it's going to allow me to delete that and throw it into the recycle bin okay so I have my mail and my banking groups so what I want to do now is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add some entries into my banking group so I do that by selecting the group and I'm going to hit this add entry button up here when I hit that it brings up the add entry screen first thing I'm gonna do is give it a title so we'll call this US Bank and I would type in my username my user uh, and then I would set a password now if you've already got a password and this is a, an old account that you're coming in and just adding you would go ahead and erase this type in the password that you use for that actual account if you were setting up a new account then you can use KeePass to actually generate a password for you now again if I hit this ellipsis it will show me what the password is currently set to and so that's the current password it should be something that's difficult to guess uh, obviously that would be very difficult for someone to guess uh, and so I'm gonna leave it set to that uh, and then it asks you to repeat it one other thing I'll show you at this point is you have key pass generator here if you click on this button you can open the password generator and it's got options for what you want to include or exclude when it creates random passwords so you can go ahead and modify this so that it gives you passwords that uh, either have or don't have uh, special characters brackets underlines etc uh, lots of advanced features in here as well that we will review sometime in the future for now we're gonna leave the password as it was generated the next thing that I have the ability to do is type in a URL okay so this would be the URL of where do you go to log in for this account uh, and I've typed in the US Bank website and then you can add notes here so notes uh, typically could be used for if you had secret questions and you wanted to capture the answers that you had put in so what's your mother's maiden name or what's your favorite high school pet or all of those questions that you get asked when you're 
creating accounts and passwords you can note those here in the notes section uh, what you what questions you picked and what answers you gave uh, you could just type in any other types of pieces of information that you wanted to uh, there's no no specific requirements there what you need to or don't need to type in once that's done again there's a lot of advanced features here we don't need to go into that yet today uh, you do have the icon option as well so you can change the icon to be anything it is that you want it to be here just select the one that you want and go ahead and hit add it'll change that icon go ahead and hit OK and now you see there is my entry so I'm gonna add just a couple of more quickly uh, I'm gonna add a couple more of these just so you can see what that looks like uh, you'll see as I add a few more they just continue down you'll see the usernames the passwords URLs notes etc so one other thing that you might want to do and you'll, you'll find yourself doing as you manage these different accounts you might have the need to change your password so if you need to do that what you would do is come in here and right click on the entry that you want to change and you'll see right here you've got edit or view entry again you also see there's a, a shortcut of return so if you just hit the return key highlight it and hit return it would also bring up the same menu so when I do that it brings me into the entry and I can make adjustments as I need to uh, I can update the password by adding values or taking away values uh, whatever it is I need to do and then I would hit OK and it would update that entry and similar to what we've covered with the groups you also have the ability to remove entries just by right clicking on an entry coming back to this menu you'll see delete entry again hotkey is delete it will ask me if I'm sure and I confirm that it has now removed that entry So now, at some future date, we need to come and log in to one of these accounts. What I'm going to do, I'm going to open up my KeePass file. I'm going to navigate to the account I want to go to. And you'll see down here, you've got a URL that you can click on if you've put that in. I could just click there. It would take me to the website and allow me to log in there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull up Notepad here and show you what that would potentially look like. Uh, we're not going to actually go I don't even know if that is their real website I just typed that in so uh, we'll pretend that this notepad file here is their website and it's asking me for a username and password so with key pass open what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to copy username and again you'll see control B is the shortcut so I could just highlight it and hit control B on my keyboard and it'll copy that and I'm going to paste that by hitting control V so I've gone to my mock website here pasted and you'll see it matches my username and then same thing for the password control C to copy uh, the password and then control V to paste it so either right click copy username copy password or control B and control C to copy those separately so copy one paste it copy the other paste it and that's how you would go and log into uh, one of these accounts one other thing that I'll show you I'm gonna hit control C again just so you can see when I copy a username or a password you see this note here data copied to clipboard clipboard will be cleared in 12 seconds so KeePass only keeps that information in the clipboard for 12 seconds then it erases so if you do copy a password it's not going to sit there forever uh, it, it, you've got 12 seconds to use it uh, before it disappears so if it takes you longer than that if you get distracted and you uh, don't paste it within that 12 seconds you'll have to come and uh, copy that and paste it back in again so once you've made edits to your file you want to go ahead and save that to make sure you keep those changes 
one thing I'll point out here is you have this little asterisk up above uh, after the file name that tells you that changes have been made to the file but you haven't yet saved them so what happens is when I save it you'll see that go away and now I've saved the file and all of my updates are saved and that does it for our review of KeePass today thanks for taking the time to watch the video and look out for our other videos on how to use KeePass from your mobile device we go through getting it set up and how you can access your one database from both a computer and your mobile device so you're not having to manage multiple files and multiple accounts. Thanks for your time. See you soon.